Okay, this is a continuation of section 1.7 from Mac 1105. We had begun to talk about how to solve absolute value inequalities, which transform into compound inequalities, which we just got done solving on the previous couple of pages. Um, what you have to learn is the, um, which case goes um, gets converted into the in-between statement and which case gets converted into the uh, or statement, and then what the interval, the solution intervals look like um, as a result of those two types of problems. So we were looking at the less than case, and whenever you are solving the less than case, and again, you have to make sure that you are in the less than case. Don't try to transform into the compound inequality before you isolate the variables, because if there's a negative multiplier out here, and you have to divide to get rid of it on both sides, it's going to change this from a less than to a greater than case, and then you'll be using the wrong setup. So make sure that before you go into the actual setup, this is the setup for less than, that there is no kind of a multiplier out here that's going to change the direction and the kind of setup that you're going to use. Okay, so less than we're doing an in-between statement, a compound inequality like we did on the previous page. We're going to work this from the middle by subtracting 5 in order to get rid of that positive 5, and then likewise on the two tail ends. At that point, you'll have 3x in the middle, 12 on the right-hand side, and negative 22 on the left-hand side. Going back to the middle to make the decision of how to further isolate this x, we need to divide by 3, which will call for division by 3 on both of these tail ends. Completing these steps, we now have x isolated in the middle. We have, oops, this is supposed to be a positive 3, not a negative 3. So I divided by 3 in all areas. And so we have a negative 22 over 3. We have just an x in the middle, and we have a 4 on the right-hand side. Okay, so reviewing the steps. We subtracted 5 to remove the positive 5, which caused us to subtract 5 in all three areas. That gave us 3x in the middle. We then still had a positive 3, so we divided by positive 3 in the middle, on the right and on the left. That gave us negative 22 over 3 on the left, x isolated in the middle, and a 4 on the right. In order to graph this, it is graphed just as it is read. When you read an in-between statement, you read it from the middle. x is in between negative 22 over 3 and 4. That is where all the solutions lie on the number line. So if you were graphing that solution set, you would just write down the numbers that are mentioned in the solution interval. Put either brackets or parentheses. Here we're using parentheses because those endpoints are not actually solutions because there are no equal signs there. And everything, every value in between negative 22 over 3 and 4 is also a solution. So this is a graph of this solution set. If you want to go to pure interval notation, this is what would be used if you were doing set builder notation. This is a graph of it. And then this is what we're trying to move you towards. Almost all your solutions will be stated in interval style, which is basically just this but without the number line. So everything from 22 over 3 to 4, that will be your interval of solutions. So make sure you're good with the interval notation. Okay, um, since part B is a special case, I am going to go to the other basic case. So you need to know two basic cases, and of course you do have to be familiar with the special cases also, but let's present the basic cases first. This was the case of less than, and in part C, the reason I think, you know, I can call this a basic case of greater than is because there's no multiplier out front, just like there was no multiplier out front here, so that you don't have to worry about it switching into some other case. So this is definitely the greater than case in part C. And the greater than case get set up as two separate um, inequalities. You're going to take this out, the expression, 
as is. Same symbol pointing in the same direction and the number just as is. You're going to set up another inequality where you take out the expression as is again. But this time you're going to switch the direction of the inequality and simultaneously switch the sign on the number. So two switches, switch the sign, switch the direction of the inequality. So the first time you take all this information out, the expression just comes out. The symbol comes down as is, the number comes down as is. But when you go to get your second, and when you go to write your second inequality, because there will be perfectly good answers in both of these intervals, you will take the expression out as is again, only you'll switch the direction of this as well as the sign. So two switches are happening here. Okay, now in solving either one of these inequalities, you know that you have to get rid of the fractions. There's only one denominator and therefore the LCD is automatically that denominator. So we're going to be multiplying everything by four in order to clear out this one fraction because you can't just multiply one term by four. Everything has to be multiplied by that same number. So I'll just kind of squeeze that four right in there. So on this first product, you're going to have 12. Then here the fours are going to cancel, leaving you with negative 3x. And then 4 times 9 is 36. Okay, continuing with that, you're going to move the 12 over to the right-hand side, at which point it will be negative 12 and will no longer be on the left, but you will still have the 3x here, the greater than symbol, and you will have a 24. Last step, see that you are dividing an inequality by a negative, and that is going to cause this to switch around. So finishing that right up here. Yes, the negative threes will be gone, but whenever your last step in isolating is to divide both sides by a negative, that's going to switch the direction of that inequality to a less than symbol. So you will have x isolated at that point. It'll now be a less than symbol. I'll highlight just to emphasize that has switched. And we'll have a negative eight. So we're going to be graphing this on our number line. There are many infinite solutions in this area. All numbers less than negative eight are solutions, or you can also find infinite solutions that will be had by solving this inequality. So again, let's get rid of the one fraction that's there, which will require multiplication by four. But since you can't just multiply one of the terms by four without doing it to the others, we will use that four on all terms so that we create, we still have the same balanced equation that we had before. So we're going to be multiplying four times negative nine here. So four times three, 12, four times three, four. So this four cancels with this, leaving us negative three X. And then four times negative nine is negative 36. And then we're going to move this 12 over here, resulting in negative 12. So this 12 will no longer be here. It'll be on the right-hand side, appearing as a negative 12 combined. This will be negative 48. And then you're dividing again by a negative on both sides, which is going to result in, I'll finish that solution right up here. That's going to result in the negative threes canceling, and you're going to have x is, this is going to switch, and that's because you're dividing by a negative. So it's going to be x is greater than, and then the number you get when you go 48 divided by negative 3, which is 16. Okay, now for giving the solution. Anytime you're doing this or case, you are going to have a gap between your two solution sets. Okay, we're going to put both of these solution sets on a number line. So here's a picture. Everything less than negative eight. 
So let's say we have negative 8 here. We're going to be going from negative 8 and any number to the left of, in other words, moving off into negative infinity, all of these numbers belong to the solution set. Or you can also find perfectly good answers that are greater than 16. All of those numbers actually work as solution. So everything from 16, but not including 16, off into positive infinity. Notice that there's a gap in between the, um, the solutions. There are solutions in here, there are no solutions in here, and there are solutions in here. The shading describes where the actual numbers are that work when plugged into this absolute value problem. Now, if you want to state this, so here is the graph of this solution set with the gap in between. And if you want to go into full interval notation, let's see, I guess I'll do it right here. I don't have much room. If you want to go into interval notation, you're going to state all of the that from here to here are good solutions. Negative infinity to negative 8. And when you want to jump over an area where there are no solutions, where you want to say there are solutions here, or you can also find solutions over here, you use the symbol, the union symbol. So union symbol, and then you can talk about the solutions over here, which are 16 to positive infinity. Notice that in both of these intervals, I'm stating the smaller quantity first, moving towards the larger one. This union means there's a gap between the solution sets where there are no solutions, and then there's more solutions over here. So this would be the worked, the ors that, the or inequalities that were set up, the graph that goes with it, and the interval that comes from that graph. Okay, why don't we go back up to part B, which is actually a special case. And we're going to, we're not going to actually go into solving this because we're going to think of this on a more abstract level. First of all, you have to isolate the expression in the absolute value bars, which means you're going to have to divide this side by negative 2 as well as this side by negative 2. So then you'll have the absolute value bars by itself. But again, you have to remember that when you're dealing with inequalities, that this symbol is going to switch whenever you divide by a negative. So instead of a less than, because you divided by a negative on both sides, it now becomes a greater than symbol. So now think about what this is saying. It's saying when is the absolute value greater than negative four, negative 4? For all values, there are infinite solutions that would be true here because absolute value is always 0, it's 0 or some positive number. So when is it great when is absolute value greater than negative 4? Always. It's impossible for it not to be greater than negative 4 just by virtue of what the definition of absolute value is. It is always, it means distance. And distance can be 0 or anything positive. So this is always going to be true. This is what we call a special case where the solutions are infinite. There are infinite solutions here. And that's because this is always true. Absolute value is always greater than negative. It's always zero or positive. Okay, so part B was a special case of infinite solutions. And then I will start part D. Part D is not so much a special case, but it is a case where you can be uh, tricked into thinking um, that it's a greater than case. I mean, I, you know, maybe it will be a greater than case, but you really need to think about what's going to happen. The way you can tell that it's going to switch is just by that negative multiplier right there. You know right there that it's going to switch. So the first thing you're going to do is add 3 to both sides. So you will now have a negative 20 on this side, and you'll have negative 5 times the absolute value of 2x plus 1 inside the absolute value. At that point, you're going to divide off the negative 5. 
And because you're dividing by a negative, it's going to switch direction.